Joining us now, of course, he is the head coach at Oklahoma State, fresh off a College World Series appearance, fourth straight, the 52-win season. I speak of Kenny Gajewski, back with us uh, for a traditional get-together here on In the Circle. Uh, coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, Eric. Thanks for having me, as always. Yeah, let's talk about this. Is I, When I was looking at your roster, I was like, wow, there's a lot of new faces, but more importantly, like a lot of old faces I'm familiar with that are no longer there. You got 11 new faces on this team. Is this one of your younger teams that you've had since you've been in Stillwater? I would, I would probably say it's the youngest team, um, without a doubt, but, um, but I would be, um, I would not doing them any, uh, justice. I mean, it's still a very talented group, you know, and, and, um, it's kind of our new challenge is, is how do we get these guys, the experience, of playing in big games and, and representing this uh, awesome softball pr pr program in school. And um, how do we make that feel as comfortable and normal um, to them as fast as, as we can. So that's the challenge. Does your coaching change with younger players? Do you have to be more patient with them than say a veteran group like you've had maybe in the last year? Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's definitely, we've had to, to kind of um, adjust a lot of things that we've done. Um, I think for, for myself, I'd be, be, be a liar if I did, didn't say we've had to go back and really like um, even um, relearn like some of the things that we've taught for a long time that we've just taken for granted with kids that we've had here for a long time. So um uh, it's, it's, um, you know, patience would probably be a little bit of that, but, um, I think as we've gotten a little older, our patience is a little, little better, or at least myself, um, than it was maybe in year one. Um, so, uh, I do have a great staff around me and, and that are able to help me and, um, help us. And so, um, I think as a group, um, you know, it's just trying to get them sped up, um, without going too fast and, forgetting the little things that that have got us here you've got also some new faces on the staff but yet familiar faces you got carrie eberly back as your pitching coach uh and you got vanessa shippy running the offense just talk about your staff as a whole and and bringing them in uh back to the fold i would assume the fact they played at the program they've worn the jersey they know what the, the culture is like supposed to be like that was a big factor oh it's a major thing i i you know I think when you really look at, um, you know, these programs that have been around um, and that have had success, you're starting to see or you have seen former players that are still a part of that. Um, I don't know that that's exactly how I, I drew it up at day one, uh, but it's what we've evolved into. And I think, you know, just speaking about Oklahoma State, it's a special, special place. Um, and it's something you have to kind of come see to actually understand. I can't, there's no, there's no amount of me talking about it that really, um, can do it any justice. It's just something you have to come and see. And, and I think when we get pe people to come here and see it, they feel it and they want to be a part of it. So, um, having v Vanessa and Carrie, uh, both back here, um, being a part of this program, both being integral parts of our our success um, from year one to right now. Um, they both love this school. Um, they love this program. Um, I know that they have my back um, every day. I mean, I give them a hard time still every day, but um, but they. I know when I go to bed at night that they're 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 thinking about our program. They're thinking about our team. Um, they're thinking about the past and they're thinking about the present and they're thinking about the future and um, to sustain success. We need to have that. Um, and it's really cool. I think it's cool for our girls here. They get to um, be led by, by coaches like them. Um, they did things right. They did things, um, uh, you know, to help us win um, the right way. And, and I think that stuff, ju it just carries on. So it's really neat to have them here. I've got an office full of former players here, which is really neat and um, makes my job a lot of fun. Right. You've built this tremendous success with the program. And as a result, people 
every time you make a comment, it seems like it makes headlines. Uh, like I kind of chuckled a little bit every time in the off season. It's like, oh, they're quoting Kenny from us, an Oklahoma State engagement event. What has that been like for you to, have you been able to adjust to that? Because you've now become a very prominent figure to the point where anytime people have an, a, a, either a question or about a topic in softball, they ask you, or if you make a comment, wherever it makes headlines. What has that been like for you? Uh, probably tells me I should keep my mouth shut more, um, to be very honest, but I don't know. That wouldn't be the best me if I was that, um, you know, I, you know, just going back, you know, I think this summer was a real, a real wake up call or a real kind of alarming, um, experience. Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm hopeful that, um, that that'll get better over time with Kelly, you know, cause it would never was meant to be in a, in a harmful way. Um, and if you really truly just want to read what I said and understand everything, it's not harmful. It's just truth. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean I don't like her or we don't like her. It just means it'll never be the same. Like it's just, and that's kind of how our game and sports are going right now. And, and, um, um, just is what it is and, and it's okay, you know? And so I'm just, I'm not going to change. I'm going to be who I am. I know sometimes it can give me in a little bit of hot water, but, um, I'd rather be the authentic me, you know, who I am, you know, what I stand for, you know, how I feel. And at least, you know, that you're going to get an honest answer. You're not going to get some kind of coach speak. You're not going to get some kind of dancing around, the subject, if I'm going to answer the question, I'm going to answer it. And I'm not going to um, worry about who's offended and all that kind of stuff. I, what matters is what matters most is the people inside our program. And, um, and I want to make sure that they understand, you know, where stuff comes from. And I was very honest with my team um, and my staff. And um, I think, uh, I think they all had my back and understood and, um, it doesn't mean they all had to agree or, 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 or that, I mean, I didn't ask them. Um, um, and if they had a problem, they would have come right to me. And so I didn't have any of that. Um, and so I think it just tells you a little bit about who I am, like it or not. Um, um, I want to make this game a better game. I want to be a part of that. And I want to make this program as, um as great as we can and and great is such a broad term i think we have a great program um and i want to just sustain that well and listen i'm part of the media so i mean i'll throw myself under the bus if we will but i do find it interesting in sports media we we want people to be honest and, and kind of share their thoughts on, on you know topics that are important and then we criticize them when they're too honest, right? We, we, if they don't give us an answer, we call, oh, you're not saying anything. And then when you do say you, you speak mm -hmm. honesty, oh, we're going to criticize that. So we kind of, you know, we try to make it difficult on our athletes and coaches for that, uh, from yeah. that regard, because I think it is important to have dialogue because this is an unprecedented time that we're through in college athletics. There's more movement with college athletes in all sports than ever before. And quite honestly, I think we're all still trying to adjust and figure all this out on the fly. So we can't expect to have you know, the perfect answer or the right answers in all the scenarios. Am I, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, um, it, this is a very fluid situation and time. Um, and, um, it's going to be very interesting to see how things shake out here over the next, uh, five years. Uh, I think it's going to look very d different. Um, but I also think it can be really good and, um, and it's not what we've been used to and, and, and you better get past that quick. And, um, uh, we have to adapt, we have to evolve. We have to stay in front of, um, in front of these roadblocks. Um, we just, we, we just do. And the good thing is, is we have a organization in the NFPA that I think wants to keep us in front. Um, and so as coaches, we've got to do our, our part. We've got to be involved, um, we need we need coaches to voice their opinions. They don't all have to um, match. Uh, we don't have to be aligned in every single thing. We just need to be um, we just need to have our thoughts out there so that we can come to some great solutions. And um, there are a lot of smart softball coaches is out there and I'm not one of them, um, but I'm going to. I'm going to at least give my opinion and and um, and then I'm willing to listen to everyone's side. Yeah, I think dialogue is kind of key. And 
important with the landscape that we're in. And uh, I mean, you have a unique perspective too, because you were a college athlete. You were a national champion. So you've seen it from all aspects. As an athlete, you've seen college athletics probably evolve as well as anybody from a unique perspective there. I mean, uh, does it blow your mind where we're at now compared to when you were a student athlete? It, it does. I mean, I, I guess, I guess it would probably blow my mind more if I wasn't actually, you know, a coach, you know what I mean? If I was outside and didn't really understand the inner workings of some of this and I don't understand it all. Um, I don't think like where we're at is necessarily a bad thing. Um, I just think like what's happened is, you know, we tried to, we tried to fend this off for, for a long time. And then what happened is instead of trying to work to a solution, we're caught reacting um, instead of being proactive. I think we could have been proactive years ago and um, this could have been a much different situation. Unfortunately, we're in a, we're in a time of, we're just having to react to all these lawsuits and um, different things that are, that have been threatened for a long time. So in the end, it, I mean, you know, there's, we probably could have been a little farther along and in a better spot if we had uh, kind of handled this uh, did this stuff a little bit better 10, 15, 20 years back. No, that's fair. And you've told me in the past when you've been on, you've seen some, you saw some of this stuff coming. Like you kind of were ahead of the curve on some of this stuff you when you've been on in the past. So I, to your point, you've kind of maybe not as surprised as many others are maybe because you saw some of the tea leaves. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. I just... You know, I'm at a school where there's a lot of open dialogue um, and and we're talking about things where what if and hey, this is out there. So you kind of have an idea of what's out there. And, um, you know, I, I I just I'm lucky in that regard there where our school keeps the softball coach in in a lease. They give me enough info to kind of have an idea of what's going on let's talk about i'm curious the, your roster started with your pitching staff and i'm curious first when you have carrie on board how much do you tell her about your pitchers that you have on the staff and how much do you not tell her because she wants to maybe find out on her own what she's got on the staff well i think with carrie it's unique because um you know she was working at a different school but I think we'd be foolish to think that she wasn't paying attention to what was going on at Oklahoma State. Um, you know, she still comes around here. Her and I talk. Um, we're, you know, we're always talking. So I, you know, she always had a pretty good idea of um, of who was here. And then when um, I reached out to her about the position, um, I was I was kind of reaffirmed what I thought like she's pretty aware of who we have who's coming in and um shortcomings that they have um uh strengths that they have and kind of already had a pretty good idea of how she wanted to attack those um and so um it was a pretty seamless uh deal um you know um and uh uh we you know we obviously at that point we still had um Kelly on staff but i i kind of knew that um i kind of already knew um beforehand that you know if i hired Carrie that Kelly may not stay so we kind of worked through that kind of stuff i mean we worked through a lot of things before she actually got here so we were hit the ground running and kind of there was there was nothing that kind of uh blindsided us so you basically had all your scenarios in your mind of what could transpire uh, yes. leading into this move. Yeah. Uh, what, tell us about this staff. You're led by Lexi Kilfoyle, the All-American, but you've got some youngsters there with talent behind her as well. So just tell us how the staffs look. Well, I think, you know, we start off with Kyra Acock. I mean, she had a tremendous first year uh, behind Kelly and uh, Lexi this past year. Um, pitched in some really big games, pitched in a lot of big moments. The moment uh, is not too much for her. We know that. Um, we're just trying to help her just evolve um, and be a little bit different than she was last year. So I uh, like what we've seen. She's gone through some, some um, mechanical change to try to uh, alleviate uh, pressure that she puts on her body and arm. Uh, she's done that very well. Uh, she's extremely hard-headed. She's an extreme worker. 
Um, and so that all that stuff makes her very good. Uh, loves to pitch. I mean, she is truly in love with with the art of uh, of pitching, and she's starting to understand that uh, in some new ways with uh, Carrie. Um, Ivy Rosenberry would be next. Um, you know, she's a Virginia Tech transfer a couple years back. Um, tremendous stuff. Um, and, uh, um, you know, uh, she hasn't done it in the, the springtime yet, uh, but the fall was pretty dang good. Uh, we were very happy with her progress um, and uh, putting her in some tough situations and watching her grow. And uh, she came back after this uh, uh, winter break uh, looking tremendous. Um, so I think she's poised to have um, her best year yet. Um, and then Katie Coots um, would be uh, our freshman, uh, who is the Gatorade player of the uh, year out of Virginia. Um, tremendous upside. Um, uh, she's got um, a tremendous work ethic. Um, she, uh, she loves to pitch. She's a little different look than the others. Um, so that gives us some, um, some good stuff there. Um, and, uh, we expect, you know, her to, I expect some growing pains, but I expect some really amazing, uh, days as well. So I think uh, she doesn't have to come in here and be a number one. Um, if she develops in to that this first year, great. Uh, but she doesn't have to be with Lexi and, um, Kyra and, and, um, uh, the, 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 the others. So I'm excited about the staff. Catherine Ogg is, um, a kid who's kind of coming on, um, she's, uh, going to have a chance to, to maybe give us some spot outs here and there, um, with a different look. And, um, so we'll see how that looks as well. You mentioned Katie, I mentioned the Virginia Gatorade player there. There's a lot of talented arms from that state that has been produced in college softball. I've talked to many coaches in that state of Virginia. That's a, that's a heck of a cue to get her, but it speaks to the brand that you can recruit nationally, go to somewhere like Virginia, which is a rich state for, when it comes to talent, especially with pitching, and you're able to get the best one. Yeah, I mean, we feel good about her. Um, obviously, um, you know, she's a, a unique story with the bodybuilding that she does and, and different things. Obviously, she's not doing that right now competitively during softball, and she won't do it at, from what we've talked about until the – her playing is done now. Um, but, um, you know, she still trains in a different way than all of our other kids. She still eats in a different way. She, she probably prepares 95% of her own meals. So when we travel and we go out to eat or we bring in food, she won't partake in that. Now she'll be at the meal, but she'll, she'll have her own food. It's a very, cool thing that's different. I know that some coaches may not want that, but it was never shied us away at all. Like we thought, Hey, this is a unique thing and maybe it'll help some of our other kids and, uh, you know, learn how to eat and train at the, at the highest of levels. So, uh, it's been a really cool thing. Talk about your offense, obviously, uh, got some returners, but a lot of new faces, obviously you got some transfers you've added to it. Uh, to speak to the offense, what do you expect this identity of this offense to be? Well, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to grow. Uh, I don't know that we're going to look as good um, the first week from what we'll look at the end. You know what I mean? That's kind of been a sign of our teams always. Um, last year was kind of the first year we kind of came out hot. Um, uh, but I think this team, it may take us a moment. Um, it may not. I don't know. Uh, it's yet to uh, see. But we sure have enough talent. Um, and um, I think you start out with like a Michaela Wark being back, um, a good, really good freshman year. Talon Edwards back, another, you know, kid had a great freshman year. Both those kids hitting the top of our order. Um, I expect them, you know, to, to uh, do the same thing. Um, you know, I, I'm so I'm really excited about, about those two without a doubt. Um, I think Megan Bloodworth is going to have a better year than what she had this past year. Obviously, was really good defensively. She struggled with her bat. We we put her through a lot of change here, and it probably didn't suit her well. Um, and uh, so I feel like we've got that rectified. She had a really good first year at Alabama, um, so I think she's capable of 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 doing that here as well. Um, and then you you add in a, a, a Caroline, uh, formerly Hudson, now Caroline Wong. 
um, uh, that put up big numbers at Liberty. Um, Jillian Pouillard, uh, who's from McNeese, um, was put up big numbers there. And then you add in, um, you know, pieces like um, a Carly Godwin, um, who I think um, will become a household name uh, fair, fairly quick. Uh, this kid is born to hit. Um, you know, she, she'll have some growing pains as well, uh, but she is walking up to the home plate to do significant damage. Um, and um, uh, I'm excited to see what she does. You've got Katie Lott and Claire Tim both had great years this past year in limited at bats, probably in that 50 at bat range that I think are going to um, see significant time. Um, and um, and that are both would probably be in the starting lineup here today. Um, uh, and both uh, perform very well this fall. So um, we've got others. Those would be the ones I would highlight uh, right now. Um, and uh, feel pretty good about them. You mentioned obviously Carly Godwin. She was a top ten recruiter, depending on which uh, you know uh, platforms you look at. It covers the recruiting cycle. This has been a highly touted freshman class. I know you've been excited about this class potentially where does this freshman class rank of all the classes you've had there could this be one of the best ones you've had well i would think so they're gonna have a tough time with the you know the cheyenne factor and the naomi and tuck and and that group uh that'll be a tough one to to uh to beat um i mean on paper i know that this one is was rated very high um and so we'll see i'll let you know that in about three or four years um, I think that's when you should actually start um, rating recruiting classes is um, after they play, not beforehand. Uh, but uh, that's not my job. So, um, but I think, you know, I left out Rose Davis, um, who um, who's bouncing back and forth from shortstop to second base, um, may even see her at third at times. Um, this kid's got some lightning in her bat too. I shouldn't have left her out of there. She was another top kid um, in that group and and um, had a great fall. Just the defense has been a little bit of a, a struggle um, up to this point. Um, we've had some really great days and then some other days where I know she's felt some frustration, but um, she's going to play a lot. Um, and uh, uh, I would say right now is in the starting lineup at second base. So um, so that would be kind of cool. You know, we, we, we can't leave her off there, but she's got a chance to do some damage with the bat as well. I'm glad you brought up the defense because I'll never forget I, when I talked to uh, your your old teammate, Tim Walton, he told me one of the challenges as coaches is with the limited hours that you have, you just can't cover everything. You can't cover all aspects because you just kind of, you have to pick, do what you can. And as a result, he feels like a lot of times in the month of February, teams are still figuring themselves out because they really don't know what their weaknesses are until they see it live action. And one of the aspects he feels like he always loses sleep over is defense. He always feels defense is slow in the month of February because of the limited hours. With that in mind, you have a young group. You mentioned it. Uh, talk about your defense, where you're at. I know you got some position battles, but how do you kind of make sure you have a solid defense considering you have some youth there, talent, but still youth? It's my main struggle right now. Um, you know, it, partly that's because that's what I coach. Um, part of that is, I mean, we just don't have, um, like the shoe in at any spot yet. You know what I mean? We've got, um, Carly Godwin playing first and third. We've got Michaela work DP and first, um, trying to keep her healthy with her knee. Um, second base we've got, you know, we've got Rose, um, over there currently, but we had Bloodworth there all fall right now. I've got Bloodworth back at third, um, you know, but she can do both very easy. I got Talon that I kind of settled in at third base in the fall. And now I've got her back at short. Um, you know, I had, J you know, Jillian, uh, was playing third, almost the whole fall, uh, you know, with Talon as well. And now we've got her to our outfield. Um, so we've just got a lot of moving parts, um, and I think it's just going to take us some games to see what people's eyes look like, what their instincts tell us in game. I think that's one of the things you can practice, practice, practice. But when you get into games, you see certain kids just do certain things well. Um, they move well. They they just seem to be in the right spot, um, that kind of stuff. And it's going to take us that's going to be a real challenge for this team. And uh, I know Carrie doesn't want to hear that because she wants uh, continuity and 
all that there. I just told her you're gonna have to be patient because we really don't know what we've got, um, you know, yet. Um, I think, I think we're very talented and I love this team and I love who they are and I love their work. Um, but games will, games will separate. They always do. Well, they got to grow. Like, you know, yeah. they, they got to learn. You got to let them play and they're going to make yeah. mistakes. They're human beings. I mean, that's just part of the nature. When you think of a lineup, how much do you balance? Boy, this helps us offensively, that big bat, but I might lose something defensively versus, you know, maybe this bat's not where it needs to be, but boy, that could help us defensively. How do you balance that out when you make those type of decisions? I think it's whoever you're talking to. If you're talking to to Shippy, she's <laughs> she's trying to score runs. You're talking to Carrie, she's trying to not give up runs. Um, so like it's it's the battle inside here always of trying to trying to play the 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 percentages, who you're playing, you know, what they do as well. Uh, may may change that, you know. Um, so uh, I mean, we're gonna be um, it'll. I think for the first time, we're gonna have multiple defensive lineups out there which we haven't had in four or five years uh, but we're going to have that and I don't think it's a bad thing uh, to be very honest I think it'll be a good thing for us and I think we'll settle um, at some point I just don't know no when the hard part is we start conference like the fourth weekend so um, we don't have a lot of time to figure this stuff out so we're going to have to use our our resources and and experience and 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 do the best thing that we can for this team. Do you, do you have, do you, sounds like you've got versatility though, that you can kind of go in a lot of different directions. Is that accurate as far as the roster is concerned? I mean, I think that, but I'll let you know, like after three weeks in, I mean, I think we've got a lot of versatility, but um, again, like you don't know until you know, you know what I mean? Until you get out there and go and uh, get punched in the face and get up and punch back. So I, I just, um, it'll, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun ride, I think. Is that why you're spending so much time in Florida? Because you know I'm in Florida. You could just tell me when I see you in person. Y'all are right there. You give me some answers. I got you. No, I... I'm, try I'm trying to chase some weather, man. We need some <laughs> wet weather. Hopefully, um, hopefully we don't bring what we've had the first couple weeks since since we've been back there. Um, man, we we've only we've only gone outside like uh three and a half days, not even that. We haven't had wow. a full day outside yet. So um it's just too cold. Uh, which is kind of rare here, but the weather's shaping up and the next, uh, you know, until our first game, until we leave, the weather looks, looks, unless we just get rained out, we, we, we've got a chance to, to go outside about every day now. So uh, we're, we're excited about that starting tomorrow. With Vanessa now, and she's been with the program. It's not like this. I, I feel like this is not really an adjustment at all. I mean, she's been around. What, what has it been like having her full time, uh, back there running the offense and how much do you just give her all say on the offense do you do you have you what kind of tell me how you delegate your staff so I mean v v Vanessa now th this will be her second year being full-time um, you know I'm not afraid to to say this at, out loud like we you know it came down when I um, made a, a hitting coach change a couple years back it came down to her and Whitney then, um, and I went with Whitney at the uh, time, um, you know, um, it didn't work the way I wanted it to the way, just, just the way I like our program to uh, run. This is not a knock against anybody. It just wasn't working the way I had hoped. And so, um, it was an easy move to go to her and say, Hey, I know I passed you up the first time. Do you want this job? She immediately was like, heck Yeah. Um, it would have been nice to have this, to be able to start in the fall. I said, I know I screwed that up. Just it's my fault. Um, but we're, we're, we're here. There's nobody else I would, would even consider. Um, and, um, she's hit the ground running with a great plan. Um, she's, I, I, I just see a really, really good look in our kids eyes, um, they're, 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 we're kind of back, you know, to where they're, they're running up to the indoor to hit, like, it's not a walk. It's, it's a run. Like they're excited. They, they can't wait to go up there. Um, and it's, uh, it's just felt very good. She has complete control of our hitters. I, I, I rarely talk to her about it. I'm watching, uh, paying attention to what she says, 
uh, but there's nothing in there that I um, I'm having any issues with. Um, I'm just very happy with her work ethic, um, her care factor. She has a way of working with each one of those kids in their own way that they need. And that's what co-teaching is. Um, if you try to shove everybody in the same box, which I think is kind of what we were doing, um, it just, it can work for a few, but it's not going to work for all. So you have to have a plan to be able to reach everyone. And uh, she has that plan. Um, I like what we're up to. Um, I'm seeing our swings um, get better. Do I think we would, we could be further along if we started this in the fall? Yeah, I do. But it's not, it's not, not what it is. Um, and so uh, I've been very happy with the way she's handled the situation. I'm very happy with the way our girls have adapted um, and how they have taken back own ownership of their swing um, and ownership of their work. Um, and, um, you know, when you're a hitter, man, it's, it's a fight up there. And, um, if you don't own what you do, you don't believe in what you do, you got no shot. So, uh, that's been the biggest thing. We have talented softball players here. So a lot of times just get out of their way and get, get, get them the work and the, uh, info that they need, um, and then let them go to work. Um, they still need guidance, um, and they need some mechanical, tweaks and stuff. But, um, you know, I hear her talking about a lot of things, but you know, the couple of things I hear her talking about is, you know, are you getting a strike? Are you getting a good pitch, you know, to hit pretty basic, but it's very, very true. Um, are you getting off a good swing? You know what I mean? Um, and, and a lot of times these kids, you know, because of the culture that we're in here, here, uh, right now in our society of lessons and this individualized, attention and all this stuff and coaching after every swing, they want some sort of mechanical feedback and it's not mechanics. A lot of times it's right up between their ears um, and just making sure, first off, are you getting a good pitch to go at? You know what I mean? And, and, um, and things like that. So I really like the process, really like what's going on. Um, I think they're starting to understand exactly what we want and um, she's doing a tremendous job. Do you have leaders as we talk? Is that still evolving? And if you have leaders, are they a type of leaders by example or more vocal? Yeah, you know, I think we we kind of have like a leadership group, but we don't put a captain on anybody's chest anymore. Um, just kind of stop that. Um, I I just I don't I think when you have that, it 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 gives you or it, it makes it where people like younger kids don't want to speak or are afraid to talk because they're not a captain. Um, you can be a leader here and be in your first year. And so I want to cultivate that amongst every one of our kids. I think we have a couple of kids that they'll probably go to if there's something that needs to, to be said. Um, but I'm always trying to cultivate um, to our, our program that anybody here can lead. Um, you just have to do it and you, then you have to, then you have to hold up your end of the the bargain and you have to be accountable. So when it comes down to it, most kids don't really want that. They say they do, but they don't really want to do what leaders do. It's lonely. Um, it's hard. Um, it takes a lot of extra time and effort. And most people are, se are, are selfish by nature and that's okay. So you just, it's, it's hard to force that, um, uh, round peg in a square or a, a square peg in a round hole. It's tough. Big 12. It's unique year uh, for many reasons. Uh, you got UCF, Houston, BYU joining the league. This will be Oklahoma and Texas's final year. What's your thoughts on the Big 12? Uh, lots of storylines in between here. What, what's your thoughts uh, on the league? I think it's going to be awesome. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, I, I, there's a lot of unknown. I mean, I've, I've never been to... Provo. Um, you know, I played in Houston, never, well, I have been to UCCF in my time at, uh, at Florida, but that program's changed. I mean, that program is, is on the up. Right. Um, so, um, it, it's, so those are three schools that, that I'm excited about. I think they can really, they're going to add tremendous depth um, to this place. Um, you know, and then we're going to lose OU in, in Texas, but then gain Arizona, Arizona state, in Utah. 
I mean, this is no joke. Like this is, this is real and it's great. I'm excited about what, what we have this year, what we're going to have next year. Um, you know, hopefully we'll find a uh, way to still play OU and, and Texas both. Uh, I've been talking to, uh, to Texas about that. Um, and then uh, I know our administration has had some talks with OU. So hopefully all that stuff still happens. I would like to play them. Um, we need to, I think it's good for softball. It's good for our state. Um, uh, I understand their, their challenges going into a new conference. Um, so, you know, we'll just kind of wait and see, but, um, I love, I love what's going on here. Um, I love this conference is going to be still really, really good. Um, I think it's still, uh, the second best conference, uh, behind the SEC, um, you know, and this year it could be as good as it's ever been. Uh, it could be the best. I mean, we'll just see, but, um, OU and Texas, um, I know are in the top five of a lot of polls. Um, obviously with OU, I think that's very well deserved. Um, and with Texas, man, I think they're going to be really, really good. Um, their pitching is really good and they've got a lot of those hitters back. I think they're, I think Mike's done a Mike and Steve and that group over there has done a really nice job recruiting and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think Baylor looks like they're there, you know, if they can stay healthy, that'll be the number one thing with them. Uh, if their pitchers are healthy, they're going to be extremely tough. Um, uh, you know, BYU's traditionally been a, a regional team and UCF's been doing that now. And uh, I think Houston has all the resources and things to do, do that with. It looks like, Texas Tech is uh, with Craig is if they can stay healthy, um, they'll be the same. They're getting better for sure. Uh, it looks like Kansas is 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 improving. Um, you know, I Iowa State's been better since they've been in the last couple of years. So, um, man, it's this is it's gonna be fun. I mean, this is gonna be a lot, and um, I, I'm really curious to see how it how it shakes out. I really agree, and I. I think it would not surprise anybody if the league ends up getting maybe three, four teams to host in the postseason, be a national seed. You could have more teams making the NCAA tournament and, you know, people, you know, be right there. I, I, to me, the, the future is really promising for the league. Yeah, we're going to have, I think this is, this is a, this may, may be a five or six team. Yeah you know, in without a doubt, um, it's going to be, you know, as long as everybody plays well, I mean, we're going to have to do, do, do our end. I mean, we're going to have to hold up our end with a lot of new folks, but there's no reason that we shouldn't play well. Um, and so um, I just, it's exciting. Like I really, I, I'm really excited about um, this conference and, and who's in it and the coaches and um, it should be fun. You mentioned the possibility of playing at Texas, which Mike White has also brought up here recently when I talked to him, and possible non-conference games. How does your non-conference scheduling be gets affected by the Big 12 being larger, a, a bigger size league? You mentioned it. Uh, you're gonna we, Big 12 starts conference earlier. Uh, how is that going to impact your non-conference scheduling in the future? Yeah, I think for us, it's going to be just kind of looking at things like, hey, do we want to, when we go to Baylor, do we want to try to play Texas? Um, do we want to just try to get in a tournament with those guys or a three game series with those guys? You know what I mean? Like these are all things that kind of, we're all talking through. So I think there's just a little bit of a learning curve for all of us, um, on what that, that looks like. Um, obviously with OU, we have some options, you know, we can do some weekdays. We've got facilities around here that we can, you know, in their new facility, that's just unbelievable, um, and then we've got Hall of Fame that we can use uh, that we could sell out in a heartbeat. Um, there's some really cool opportunities. Um, you know, if we can all be on the same page, I think it can be awesome. So we'll just see. I mean, it's all um, it's all out there. We'll we'll just kind of you know, there's everybody right now is focused on their team and um, doing that kind of stuff. So we'll pick that stuff right back up when it's time. You mentioned, of course, talk about your team. You're going to be out west. You're going to play in Clearwater. Uh, for that marquee tournament, you're going to play in Tampa right though after that in a marquee tournament there. And it's got Washington. So you've challenging yourself here. You've mentioned the good weather in Florida, but you're going to have good competition. Just talk about your scheduling this year. Yeah, I think, I mean, if, you know, you've paid close attention to our, our program. I mean, we try to play the best schedule um, in the country. I mean, that's something that I've always tried to do. Uh, do. Um, I don't always love it when you're staring at it all winter break, 
Uh, but when you get to the end and you're in April and May, that's when you go, man, I'm glad we played that schedule um, because that's what it comes down to. Our PI and schedule strength and um, top 25 wins, top 50 wins. And um, those are all things that matter to the committee when they're passing out, um, uh, uh, you know, national seeds and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, we've been used to hosting here. Um, we would like to keep that up. And I think the only way to do that is to play a schedule and then to win some of those games. So um, we're always going to try to go to Clearwater as long as they'll invite us back. We're going to go. Um, we decided to stay in Tampa um, this year. Um, get, um, you know, we'll get a midweek game, I believe, against Stetson. In the land, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll uh, and then we'll play in that. Um, we'll play in Kenny's tournament uh, at South Florida and you know, when I set that up, um, I didn't know who was going to be in that. I just figured he usually has good teams there. And then, then the team started to pop in there. I was like, whoop, here we go. Uh, <laughs> I'm not backing out. I'm not, I mean, I told him we're coming, so we're coming. So it's great. Um, so we'll be challenged. Um, we'll be challenged. It'll be great. Um, you know, we're, we set up that game with UCLA the first weekend, uh, the, really cool thing is um you know that's going to be an espn game um that they picked up uh they they called us both and said hey we'd like to put this on in the first uh weekend can you guys adjust your time we were both of course so so i mean what an opportunity right to to play on tv early um against uh you know a great program and ucla and and um obviously know kelly well and go way back with them so um kind of fun that's pretty fun indeed and you know clearwater you'll be on, on broadcast as well so a lot of exposure there my last question as you get going in the season you mentioned playing the ucla out west part of that west coast to start the year and then come down to florida biggest question or maybe in your mind or key that you're looking forward to finding out about your group early that will be a key factor for the rest of the year oh Man, I got a thousand of them. Um, I got a lot of, a lot of question marks. Um, you know, I just, I just want to see how our girls, um, react to um, situations. Um, you know, and there's going to be a lot of them, right? What does that look like? Um, I think that'll tell us a lot about who we have. If, if that look is is bright eyed and like, yeah, this is good. Like, we got this. Like, that's exciting if it's like a uh a defensive like withdrawn look that'll be worrisome um so um but you just don't know um i think we have a really tough team um uh, but we'll see when it when it really happens and um you know for some of these girls um you know they played some competitive uh stuff but um uh with what um with what they've um uh our previous teams have accomplished um, like I keep telling them, these teams are coming to beat your butt. Like you, you, you need to understand that quickly. Um, so um, they'll they will be ready to play you. You're not gonna you're not gonna surprise anyone. So um, we just gotta we gotta do our very best of just playing the game of softball. And uh, I think if we do that, we got a chance, you know, to be really good. That's Kenny Gajewski, head coach of Oklahoma State, joining us here on In the Circle. Coach, always a pleasure to catch up our, for a yearly traditional uh, get-together. I look forward to seeing you in Florida. Uh, hopefully we will not disappoint you and give you good weather. I can't make any promises because it's uh, we've had some wacky weather ourselves, although uh, nobody feels sorry for anybody in Florida, so I'm not even going to complain no. about weather. <laughs> there you go. Uh, hey, be safe. Uh, look forward to seeing you down there and thanks for always taking the time to talk to us and uh, talk about your team and talk so many topics and softball we can always enjoy it and uh, thanks for doing this and I'll see you down the road appreciate it